that's left for me is here in this eternity of isolation, isolation. So I just woke up and Josie's just called me and Rachel saved my name to tell us that she fell over last night and she thinks she's broken her elbow maybe? Or she's done something really bad to her elbow. Because yesterday, when we were all in the garden, she was cleaning out the garage and uh, she left some old hanging baskets outside the front door and she came out the garage in the dark and didn't see the baskets and then fell all the way over onto both of her arms um, and has seriously just done her elbow in and it's been excruciating all night and now she's got like a limited range of movement in it so she has to go to the hospital so now she's going to go to the western general um minor injuries department um which just is it's just not where you want to be going right now they've got covid patients in there yeah so i i asked her if she could to try and film a little bit and if she does then i'll be able to put it in the this video for everyone to see what it's like at the hospital right now but um if not then i'll just come back and tell you what happens if she's okay and everything but yeah interesting start of the morning hello this is josie cam um i'm in the car with me and katie's mother dawn and we are headed to the minor injuries unit at the western general because yesterday i fell and hurt my arm and Going to be the first person to go into well we're going to be the first people to go into a hospital since all this nonsense broke out so i think katie wants us to show you guys some of the action um but yeah i'm in a lot of pain we'll see if i actually have hurt myself because if not then i'm gonna be really embarrassed so I mean, hopefully I'm not really badly injured, but at the same time, it's going to be really embarrassing if I make a really big fuss and then make it, my mom take me to the hospital and then nothing's wrong with my arm. So we'll see. But I'll film, I'll try and film something at the hospital that isn't like people's faces or something and then I'll um, keep you all updated. Bye. Waiting on an x ray. So, oh, oh, I'm filming! I have to get Rachel's order so I can see what it is. Right, it's Josie Cam. Um, <clears throat> I'll do that in one second. Okay, one second. So, we're out of the hospital. I have a broken elbow. So, a radial fracture. This is the information sheet. Here it is. Sorry, I only have one hand. This is taking longer than I thought it would. This is my sh informational sheet. This is not the best way to show you. <laughs> oh, you know what, whatever. <clears throat> I hurt my elbow, it's really sore. In the hospital, we had to stand six feet away from all of the counters and everything. There was some big caution tape up, which you probably saw. Um, I was told not to take ibuprofen because no one in the world is allowed to take ibuprofen right now because of this bed is so I got some paracetamol I got my wrist all like this um, and I have to exercise it and stuff to make sure that it doesn't go stiff um, but yeah that was my little adventure to the hospital because I broke my elbow and now we're at McDonald's because McDonald's is closing at 7pm tonight forever so every single person in the world is at McDonald's panic buying because it's the last time that anyone will be able to buy McDonald's for a really long time. Bye. Okay, today's isolation dinner update. We've got homemade sweet potato wedges, which 
Paul put together as loaded sweet potatoes. So they, they were the wedges with pulled barbecue jackfruit on the top and then lactose free cheddar on the top of that. And then that got baked. And we've got some spicy beans on the side and some oat based creme fraiche. So I'm very excited about this. And we're watching Tiger King on Netflix, which everybody keeps talking about. So I think that's going to be kind of cool. Yeah. They're always really fast. Yeah. So my family's told me that there's going to be an announcement from the Prime Minister at half past eight today. So we've just got um, BBC One turn on. We're waiting for that. It's like 20 minutes past eight right now. So I'm going to film that when that comes on and then tell you guys what's happening. Because I know you can't really hear the TV whenever I'm filming it. Um, but we've got the subtitles on, so you'll be able to read what's being said anyway. In this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. But there's a critical... Hello. So, I filmed three minutes of the Prime Minister speaking during the update for like five full minutes. And now I'm watching the footage back and you can't hear what he's saying at all. And their subtitles were broken for the whole thing, so there's not even subtitles on the video. So I'm just going to tell you what he said. Um, yeah, basically it's he wants to do the total lockdown thing. So everyone has to stay at home. We're only allowed to go out for four reasons, as far as I can remember. One of the reasons is to go get shopping for food. One of the reasons is to go shopping for medicine or for medical treatment. One of the reasons is for a daily exercise and just to like walk around and then oh, what was the fourth reason? Oh to go to work if you have a job that is unfit necessary. Those are the four reasons. So food jobbing, medical treatment, work, exercise. That's the only four reasons and if you're outside the police can stop you whenever they want and be like why are you outside and then you have to tell them. I don't think they've got powers to actually like charge people or convict people so far but they were talking about making it like a £50 fine £50? yeah it wasn't a massive fine but it's still annoying so yeah so he wants us to not go out anymore which is upsetting so we're trying to figure out what we're all going to do about that um, but yeah I'll come back for a longer update at the end of the day someone's hiding on a chair at the top of the stairs <laughs> Who's this? Oh my goodness. Oh, it's Daphne. Are you sleeping? Sleeping. Yep, so apparently we live in a haunted house now. And this light's flickering in a really ominous way. And it's actually swinging as well. Can you see it swaying? It's moving. Yeah. Haunted. That's haunted. So I'm in the kitchen. It is not that time. And I fancied a snack. And we've got hummus, so I wanted to make pita bread because we don't have any in the house. And we're not going to go to the shops for like another like five days. Um, because you're we're trying to only go once a week. So I've never made pita bread before, so this will be pretty exciting. I've got yeast. This stuff. Um, which we just had is left over. Plain flour, olive oil and warm water. I think that's all you need. I'm, I'm going to cook it in a pan. So I'm going to see how that goes. Um, might be a disaster. Might waste loads of flour. Don't really know. But hopefully not. So I'll come back and show you how it's going. All right. Got my warm water and I've got my plain flour with the yeast in it. And I'm going to mix it all in. Okay. Um, so it said to whisk it together and then leave it for 15 minutes until it becomes spongy. And then I'm going to come back and add olive oil. So we'll be back in 15 minutes. Okay, so this is it supposedly at the sponge stage. I'm not sure if I'd call it spongy. It's definitely bubbly. Anyway, now I'm going to add 
olive oil, salt, and a bunch more flour and make this into a dough. All right, so I've made my dough ball. I need to make it into a ball and then put it into this bowl here, which has some olive oil in it. And then I need to let that sit to rise for like two hours. And then hopefully it'll be bigger when I come back. Okay, my bowl is ready. I've covered it in olive oil so it doesn't stick to the sides of the bowl. And I'm just gonna cover it with this foil and come back in a little while. Well, since my pit reds are rising right now, I thought I'd come and do my end of the day check-in. Um, so today was crazy. Uh, Josie broke her elbow, um, but she, I wasn't with her, she, so she went to hospital with my mum. And I've been home all day. Um, today... Obviously, you'll have seen I put in the video of the announcement for the Prime Minister and the First Minister. They decided to fully enforce people staying in their homes all the time. So that means we're not allowed to go anywhere apart from the supermarket or the doctor or the pharmacy. That's it. We're only allowed to go out shop for food or medicine. Um, we're not allowed to go visit our family, we're not allowed to go visit our friends, we're not allowed to do anything. So that's that upset me. I really hope that they weren't going to do that. But I guess they've decided that it's gotten bad enough that we have to, so we don't really have a choice. Um, they said that they would put in some emergency powers for the police to be able to reinforce it on the street, so if they see people out... Um, being really irresponsible in a big group in public, then they'll um, tell them to disband <clears throat> and go their separate ways. Um, we're still allowed out to do uh, exercise once a day, one different type of exercise. So I'm thinking me and Paul might get into some um, swimming stuff. We've both got wetsuits and we, we like swimming outside. So hopefully we can find somewhere nice and nearby that we can go for a little dip. Um, but one of the places where they like to go swimming is a reservoir and there'll be no way they'll be letting people swim in reservoirs just now. That would be a public health nightmare, I think. But we'll find something. Um, and I'm trying to figure out what to do with my family because we kind of already agreed that as a group of seven, we would all still see each other. Um, so my parents, Rachel and her boyfriend Elliot, me and Paul and my sister Josie. But I don't know if that's now I don't know if that's allowed or not. Is it illegal for me to go visit my mum? Like, is it actually? What, if I get stopped, are they gonna say, "Oh, that's not good enough reason to leave the house"? But I think it's a good enough reason because I know I'll go mental if I have to stay in the house all the time and do nothing. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's really bad. It's really bad. I don't want to do this. I don't want to just stay at home. I, I really don't like doing stuff that gets me in trouble. I've always hated that. I don't like being bad. I don't like breaking the rules. I don't like any of it. And the thought of the fact that going out to visit my family means I'm breaking the rules and that I might literally get stopped by the police is freaking me out so much. But I'm trying to like, oh, my mom's a genius. She's already like, oh, we can, we can like meet at the supermarket and like, you can come home with us or, you know, we can, like, all say we're going to the shops and then go to the same shops and then we can pick people up from the shops and, like, s sneak around and be really sly and everything. <clears throat> and I really want to do that. It made me feel better when she said that because I was like, oh, God, yeah, that's a good way to get to see each other. And <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know if I should be talking about it on the internet because... What if someone sees this? Not that they would. Nobody watches these videos. But what if somebody was w watched this and then was like, "Oh my god, this is proof that you did a crime during a public health crisis," and then they want to like fine me or put me in jail or something? Even though we're like, we already decided as a family. It's like we are a family unit, and we have decided to isolate together as a family unit. So I really, I don't want, I don't understand. I don't think we should be allowed, or we, no, I think we should be allowed. <laughs> we should be allowed. I don't think, but I don't think we are allowed to go visit them. But are we going to do it anyway? 
I don't know. Most people don't have any problem with a little bit of, like, civil disobedience. But it's always freaked me out. And now I don't know. It's a dilemma. But I know I want to see my family. I don't want to stay away from them. Three weeks doesn't sound that bad. But it isn't three weeks. It's indefinite. They're like, oh, just three weeks and then we'll reevaluate. But, like, <coughs> um, I've not got a great deal of hope that it's going to be three weeks when everybody else is saying three months. Really. I can't stand it. I love Paul, but, like, I just go mental. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking about maybe uploading all these videos. Maybe even if we do do something we're not supposed to do. And then just putting them private, on private, on my YouTube channel so that nobody can see them. So they can be, like, a personal video diary that's just for me and after this is all done, when the laws are changed or whatever, it's not illegal anymore. I'll just put them public. So, um, yeah. I don't know why I care though. There's people out fucking partying and going mental and not giving a shit. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to go see my mum inside our own house. It's like private property. Like, you can surely they can't stop us. What if it's private property? I don't know. Anyway, I'm ranting. I'm going to stop now. And shut up and just watch telly until my Peter Bread's ready and then I'll come back. Okay, anyway. Bye guys. Okay, so an unexpected update. Um there's been a power cut. <laughs> um and it's been about ten minutes so far. I'm still in the living room in the dark. I lit a bunch of candles. I don't know what I'm going to do if that door rises because I won't be able to cook it because this house is only electric. We don't have gas cooking. So I'm not going to be able to cook it if the power's not back on again in, in like an hour. Really hope the power doesn't take an hour to come back on. God, anyway, I thought just I would take this opportunity to show you what I'm doing on my computer. Um, So this is what I've been working on. Basically, this is for my PhD. It's a... Uh, um, program called QGIS which is a mapping software and part of what I'm doing is I'm mapping quarries all around um, Hadrian's Wall because I want to discover where the Romans got their stone from to build the wall. Kind of like how when they built uh, when archaeologists were studying Stonehenge they were like they realized some of the stone had come from really far away and they wanted to find the quarries to see how far they carried it in prehistoric times. So it's like that. I'm kind of um, using various scientific methods to match up stone from quarries in the wall and see where the stone came from. So I'm mapping the quarries just now and I've got this one here. It's called Coom Crag, which is a really cool one. And it's got lots of Roman inscriptions on it. But I was just looking at this um, LIDAR data, which is like sort of um, a 3D model of the landscape. And I noticed this huge area here has really looks like it's all been quarried out and then this this bit here and i can't believe i never noticed it before but look at the size of this huge pit and i think that that might also be a quarry rather than a natural feature because it's right on a river bed so you'd expect the banks to look like this this looks perfectly natural to me this whole bit and unless this has been some kind of weird landslide or like a it formerly been a lake or something like that and it's sort of drained out i really just can't believe it but it has this this line here that's not on the screen that that straight line is actually a feature on the ground it has a sort of triangular shape and i just suspect that that's not natural there's a couple of straight angles in here that make me think this has been a quarry this angle here <laughs> But I need to go check it out in real life just to see if there's any carved stone blocks lying in the ground or rubble or um, anything that would make be evidence of it being a quarry. But I can't because I'm not allowed to leave the house. So that's annoying. So I'll just have to imagine what could have been, sadly. Um, but I think I'm going to stop working because it's pretty late at night. Um, and I'm going to watch True Blood, I guess, in the dark until my door rises and wait for the power to come back on.
So yeah, bye. Well, good morning. Um, I'm happy to report that the pit of bread dough was not wasted. Paul got up in the morning and made these little chonky pit of breads. Um, I think they've come out a bit too fat because they had to sit and keep rising all night, which they're not supposed to do in the recipe. So it's not the recipe's fault. They still look pretty delicious. So I'm going to have some of these with some hummus and some hot sauce or something for my lunch. Um, and maybe a bit of tomato. And that, that'll be quite yummy. Bread for nothing. Mm. Filming our walk. We're allowed to go out once a day for exercise. So Paul's going to show me where the train station is. So I've never walked to the train station before. So we're on this nice little path. It's pretty quiet. We have seen a few people out though. But yeah, just trying to enjoy the nice weather. What have you found, Paul? Look at that scary wire. Wow. It's kind of ominous. I guess it's to stop people walking over, but it's scary. I'm gonna go down here and find Paul. Ooh, try not to fall over. Okay. Is this the Brock's burn? No. What is this? Um, <laughs> it up. Water one. A water substation. Pump station. A pump station. Mm. It's got cable attached to it though. Yeah, I think that's it, bro. Yeah. Do you have any more fake facts you want to tell me? <laughs> well, you can see that there's a ditch that there of water in it. So. Oh, around it? Yeah. That makes me think it's to do with the water supply rather than the electricity. Mmm, science. <laughs> Look how ominous that is. Yeah, it's so much more dangerous than just letting kids climb up as a pipe. Yeah, because look how far they'd fall. Like, they'd be fine. You're right. I think that is more dangerous than letting kids crawl across a pipe. Because it's a really shallow stream. With really cool giant bits of pottery in it as well. Look at the size of that big bit of pottery right there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, get back, Paul. Also, I found some what I think are funky mushrooms. Like here. Is that a funky mushroom? No. I don't know. You can't see what happens at the end. Walk out at the end. It looks like you're going to heaven. Goodbye, Paul. Goodbye. Oh, I'll miss you. Up oh, Paul Station, we made it. Enjoy the pleasures of Pumferston Refinery. Can you eat oil? <laughs> delicious, delicious shale. What is that? Oh, it's a real card. We made it. We found the train station. Which news report? Oh, we didn't watch tonight's yeah, news report. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Me and Paul uh, got back from our walk a while ago. We've had our dinner. We had pizza for dinner. And we're watching Netflix. <laughs> We've been watching Netflix for quite a long time now. And yeah, that's the end of the day, really. I'm just going to check out now and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye.